every time you hear the word church is not referring to a physical building it's referring to the people that make up the group the mercy of god is not just about forgiveness of sins the mercy of god allows things to work for a person blind Bartimaeus cried out to jesus and said son of david have mercy on me when he says is the lift of your head he can use anyone to help you when situations may look bleak hold them to go Jehovah Nisi, we say thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Thank you, choir. Let's be seated in the wonderful presence of God. As our custom is on Thanksgiving Sunday, if you have any testimonies, please make sure you see King Daniel and Dickiness Fumi and then let them know, share your testimony with them first. And then that way, they would let us know how many people are sharing testimonies. Hallelujah. We must start to do things um, in a more processed way so that the name of the Lord will be glorified. The Bible says everything must be done decently and in order. In order. Hallelujah. Today, I'm talking to us about the power of thanksgiving the power of thanksgiving romans chapter 1 verses verse 21 romans chapter 1 verse 21 using the amplified for even though they knew god as the creator they did not honor him as god or give thanks for his wondrous creation on the contrary, they became worthless in their thinking, godless with pointless reasonings and silly speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. Don't be anxious or worried about what? Anything. Hallelujah. Anything means what? Anything. Regardless of the name that thing is called, don't be worried. But in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with what? Thanksgiving. Continue to make your specific request known unto God. God bless the reading of his word. If you are somebody of gratitude, it will change your attitude and actions towards life. If you are somebody that in every situation, in every circumstance, the only thing you can see there is the hand of God. You will never be worried. When you are somebody that is always thanking God, it will change the way you live. There's power in living a life of thanksgiving. There's power in living a life of thanks. Hallelujah. And we can see several examples in the scripture. David was in a position where everything that he owned was taken in one day. Yet he said, bring me the effort. Take me to the presence of my maker. Let me seek the face of the one that created me. Hallelujah. Many of us will be running out of scatter, shouting up and down, saying, where is God? Where is God? No. Even in the face of stoning him, his own people. <laughs> Yet he remained with an attitude of gratitude. Hallelujah. So there's power in gratitude for our blessings whether those blessings are small or big it doesn't matter because many of us we usually forget that even if we are busy and the pressures of life we need to sometimes just pause 
and be thankful for what God has done and will continue to do. See, man, we always think as if God is like us. Before you do things, you are waiting for somebody to do something to you. That's not the God we serve. He said, whether you are good, whether you are bad, I'll make the sun shine. <laughs> whether you are good, whether you are bad, the rain will fall. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't go to the food store and they're asking you, are you good, are you bad, before they sell you food. Hallelujah. So thanksgiving can become a sacrifice. It may be difficult to offer praise and thanks, especially when things are not going as planned. You may be thinking that when I get to the United Kingdom, by so, so, and so, I will have this, I will have that, I will have that, and UK will deal you some blows. <laughs> Those of you that say, <laughs> I suspect you. <laughs> you will come in here and see things and everything is working. You can see that everything is smooth. Yes, things are not smooth. Hallelujah. <laughs> there was one area that we used to live. I will be strolling in the evening, sometimes praying, and I'll be thinking, God, these people don't have two heads now. What is happening here? Hallelujah. May God help us. So you may not feel like thanking him. Because you may feel that you don't have time. You may feel that you are struggling. You may feel that things are not working financially, physically, or even emotionally. There's power in thanksgiving. You may be weary from the issues of life. You may feel like God has let you down. Thanksgiving is important. Not only is Thanksgiving important, it is crucial to a life of a Christian. Hallelujah. And Job demonstrated that. Say, do he slay me, yet I will trust him. That must be a man that knows God. That in the midst of trouble, in the midst of things not working the way I want it to work, yet I, re I determine to trust God. Because thanksgiving, it is the cornerstone of any life of prayer. You go to God, you thank him. Even before you start telling him what you need, you are first of all saying, God, thank you. Thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you for this prayer that I'm even about to pray. Thank you because even if you don't hear or don't answer, I still want to thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you never been there that you are going to God and you, are, you, you have needs, you have things that are pertinent, that are important, that are crucial, yet you go there and be saying, God, it's still up to you. Whether you do it or not. Because thanksgiving is a way of life for everyone that is a member of God's kingdom. Because the Bible makes it clear that a grateful heart is an open door to seeing God's manifest presence. When you are just grateful. You are grateful. One meal a day, I'm still thanking him. Things are not working. You, 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 there's need. Nobody's denying it. Those bills are coming in, but you are still saying, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Is somebody thankful today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, this is your amen. Is somebody thankful today? <laughs> so, despite all the difficulties that this year may have brought, there's still hope. 2023 is not over. Hallelujah. Because the mercy of God, the loving kindness of God is still our portion. We can be thankful because we know that the goodness of God knows no end. We can be thankful. Because we are assured that his faithfulness over us and our children is for many years to come. Psalm 37 verse 25. Psalm 37 verse 25. He said, I have been young. Now I am old. Yet 
I have not seen the righteous. Those in right standing with God. He has never seen them done what? Abandoned. Or his descendant pleading for bread. I was telling the workers this morning, there's no how you are serving your creator and he will abandon you. For the fact that you have been crying to him and he has not answered, it doesn't mean he won't answer. Because gratefulness is a gateway into God's presence. And there are so many things the power of thanksgiving can do in our lives. Number one, the power of thanksgiving will increase God's presence in your life. You are somebody that you are never disturbed by whatever is happening. In everything, you know, there's some people you will talk to, any little thing, they will just say, let's just be thankful. At least it's not bad. Let's just be thankful. At least it's not as this. Let's just be thankful. Hallelujah. We praise God. Thanksgiving increases God's presence. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13. 2 Chronicles 5.13, we read there that, that account of when the, the, the temple of God was dedicated and singers were to make themselves hear one voice in unison, 2 Chronicles yeah, 5.13, in unison, the singers were to make themselves hear with one voice, praising and thanking God. And when they raised their voices accompanied by the trumpets and cymbals and other instruments, when they praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy and loving kindness endures forever. Then the house of the Lord, what happened to the house of the Lord there? The house of the Lord was what? Filled. Another version says, with the glory of God, God descended. Hallelujah. So this scripture is revealing to us that when we are unified in your heart, just thanking God, our Lord, it may not be what I want, but I still want to thank you. Because when you have a heart that is overflowing with praise, it is hard for God to leave you in that position. Very hard. Psalm 22 verse 3. Psalm 22 verse says, God inhabits the praises of his people. Because I just want to thank him for everything he has been doing. I just want to say thank you. You are greater than my problems. I know. You have not done anything. I still appreciate that I know you. Hallelujah. Because knowing him is enough. Do you know that if you are related to Rishi Sunak, there's a way you will walk in this UK. Your steps will change. Do you agree with me? Even if you are walking in number 10, Downing Street, you will do as if nobody, no police can stop you. Nobody can. That you are walking in that place, that you go in and you walk out through that same door. That presidents and head of states and different dignitaries go in and come out. Even though you are the one opening the door, your mind is at rest. That if I don't get to work today, somebody will call me from the number 10 down the street. <laughs> Amen? There's a way. That is human beings for you. Now you are the child of the one that owns the heavens and the earth. Yet you are afraid of another creator like you. You don't know who you are serving. When you know God, that my thanking him brings his presence, wherever I go, I'm going with him. Hallelujah. Number two, the power of thanksgiving unlocks miracles. Mark chapter 8, verse 7. Mark 8, verse 7 talks about the story of Jesus taught, you know, praying on a, a few small fish. And the bread, and when he had given thanks, he ordered that this fish be set before them all. Amazing. He thanked God for just a small amount of food. Do you know that? That could be the last thing in your house, and you are praying and saying, God, I thank you. 
there's no money to buy anything else, but I still thank you for this one I have. And because he's a God of miracles, people can knock on your door. Even that terrible neighbor. <laughs> Amen? Can come and knock and say, I just feel like giving you this lasagna. <laughs> I feel like giving you this, uh, which other one? Cottage pie. Uh, you're not used to it, but you will eat it with love. <laughs> Amen? And you know what I've realized? When you're in a position like that, you don't say, ah, she's a witch, because you're hungry. <laughs> you will sanctify the thing and plead the blood of you, you eat and you'll be comfortable. Hallelujah. Praise God. It unlocks what? Miracles. Because as a result of Thanksgiving, people see amazing miracles. John 11, verse 41, we see the account of Jesus again at the tomb of Lazarus. It says, I thank, I thank you, God, because you always hear me. He just spoke to Lazarus that was dead for four days, and the guy came out. Many of us, if we're in that position, and we're in that situation, we'll first of all run. Seeing a dead man for four days come out with grave clothes. You won't believe it's him. Because when, when Thanksgiving unlocks miracles, restoration is bound to happen. Number three, the power of Thanksgiving, he helps you to pray more. A grateful heart will always see God's face. If you are grumbling, if your heart is not happy with the God you are going to pray to, you can't pray. Philippians 4, 6 to 7, he reminds us. He said, do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, in every circumstance, in every situation, by prayer, by petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. I go before him, I'm thanking him before making any request. Even when I'm making requests, I'm also thanking him. My heart is assured there's peace within me. I don't need to be troubled. If you don't get to the point where you take God at his word, you will never see the power of God at work. As a child of God, a time comes, God orchestrates some of these things that you will be in a tight spot and there will be nowhere else to turn other than God. And if you make the mistake of ignoring that inclination and seeking after men, God will know you are not ready. Amen? I always tell people, every time you hear messages like this, even me as a preacher, as I'm preaching the power of thanksgiving, I know challenges will come. They will say, that thing you have said, let's see whether you will do it. I know. So every time I'm preaching, I'm preparing messages, I'm also praying that when the uh, trials come, I'm prepared. So this month, I know it's coming. We said this month is the power of God. He's coming to try us. Let's see that God. Let's see that power of God. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid. The power of thanksgiving can do wonders. So giving thanks is essential when we're praying. Colossians 4 verse 2. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. It said, be persistent. Devoted to prayer. Being alert, focused in your prayer life with an attitude of what? Thanksgiving. Focus on your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. Focus on your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. I'm being persistent. I'm being devoted to prayer. I'm being alert. I'm not just praying. I'm also watching. And I'm focusing on my prayers with an attitude of thanksgiving. Once I pray, I begin to thank him. God, I thank you because I know you will do it. 
I thank you because I know you have heard me. I may not see it, but I trust you. Hallelujah. And finally, the power of thanksgiving enables sacrifice on the halters of our hearts. What do I mean by that? Because Psalm 50 verse 23 says, He will offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving honors me. Psalm 50 verse 23, He will offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving honors me. There's a sacrifice necessary because God knows that sometimes you won't feel like it. God understands that sometimes it may be difficult. God understands that you may be in challenging situations, but yet you want to do what? You want to thank him. And he said, and to him who orders his way rightly, who follows the way that I show him, I shall show the salvation of God. Your heart in enables sacrifice. You, you want to, regardless of what's going through, you are willing to just wait. You are willing to be patient with God. You are willing to, with a heart of thanksgiving, not, not grumbling within yourself. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, I conclude with this. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. In situation, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be what? Thankful. Continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. This is the desire of God for you and I. That in everything we're just saying, God, thank you. Because even when you are not sure of what's next on God's agenda for your life, I still want to say thank you. Because that power of thanksgiving, it will keep you thankful and contented. The power of thanksgiving will give you a heart that demonstrates that you trust God and you trust in his sovereignty. You are assured that God is keeping you in the perfect will of his when you are thankful. Because if we go back to that Romans 1, 21. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Those that don't know how to thank God, their hearts are darkened. Even though they knew God as creator, they did not honor him as God or give thanks for his wondrous creation. On the contrary, they became worthless in their thinking. Another, and their foolish heart was what? Darkened. You think you can think of everything, you know the plan, you know what to do, and you'll be running elter skelter. And yet, all you needed to do is to be thanking him. Colossians 2, 6 to 7. So we need to understand how to thank him. He said, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in union with him, reflecting his character in the things you do and say, living lives that leads other, others away from sin. You're not even telling them now. You're not preaching. Your life is preaching to others. Hallelujah. Verse number seven. Having been deeply rooted in him and now being continually built up in him and becoming increasingly more established in your faith, just as you were taught and overflowing with it with what? Gratitude. I'm just thanking him. That I know you, Father, I thank you. That I'm saved, Father, I thank you. That I'm walking in your precepts, Father, I thank you. That I'm able to read your word and understand it. That my faculties are intact. That my eyes can see. Whether with lens or not, 
I still praise you, Lord. That I can walk, I can decide to get up and just move my legs and my legs will actually move. God, I thank you. Let somebody rise up and let's begin to thank our Father. Begin to thank him. Thank him. Think of the things he has done for you. 11 months is come now. For the past 10 months, God, you have been eating food and nothing has gone wrong. Ah, some of you have not even been to your doctor for the past 10 months. Begin to thank him, begin to praise him, begin to worship him, begin to adore him. There's no God like this God. We worship your uh, worship you, our maker. We thank you for everything. There's no God like our God. To you be all the glory, to you be all the honor, to you be all the adoration. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Libra do shata barike sekete lege de boko shantaya. We worship you, Lord. Rako sete yende leke ronde sote lega da balende. Eje do zize kete lege dondo lege de shanta. Rabakuto zekete lebra da kasakate. Marabuko shata yadabat.